Hello, it's Wendy Capewell, and today we're going to be talking all things teens. Today I'm going to be talking to Anika Vassell. She's a teen behaviorist, and she's going to be talking to us t- today about teens. And yeah, gives gives it away in the title, really. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, can you introduce yourself, Anika, and tell us a little bit more about yourself? Okay, so yes, yeah, thanks for that introduction, Wendy. Um, I work with parents predominantly, so even though my title is um, Teen Behaviourist, I actually work supporting parents and professionals who work with teens, understanding the psychology of teen behaviour, understanding that actually teens go through a developmental stage that is very different from their childhood years, the naught to five years, it's very different from their adult years, and actually the struggles that parents are facing or people who work with teens are facing is um, just a natural part of the course, and I kind of just normalise it all. So whilst we're all isolated, pretty isolated, thinking that it's only happened to us and that we may be bad parents, actually, no, this is like a developmental cycle, and many, many parents are going through the same thing. So many parents, so many people, full stop, don't understand about that part of the brain, the teenage brain, that it's not completely, the neo-neuro part of the brain isn't completely formed until, well, my understanding was like 20s, but I have heard research saying it goes into 30s. Yeah. So it's... Um, yeah, early to mid-20s, that's kind of where where I'm at with it but um, it's a long drawn out process and it can be heart-wrenching to see our children go through this it can be devastating as parents when we feel we've got no control over it and these are like little adults who may be taller than us telling us that they're not going to sit on the naughty step you know what do we do what do we do when they're doing that so yeah um, it can be quite a traumatic time for the whole family you know there are there are family breakups because of this so actually you um being a relationship specialist i'm sure that you know you've come across this where you know the the behavior of the teen actually gets in between the relationship between um you know the the part relationship i do see it and it's it's encouraging the parents uh not to allow that that teenager to build a wedge between them yeah because once once i don't know that they're always doing it in their in their awareness but once they see that chink in the armor and they think that they can drive mum and dad apart they they really have got the upper hand yes yeah and absolutely and i don't even think it's them consciously wanting to drive mum and dad apart it's about them wanting their own way and that by any means necessary they are going to go for the weakest link and um and go there and you know so it can it, it can be quite a fraught time um of instability in in the family when they do that so you know really that is a time when parents need to be pulling together with all they might really be sticking on the same page because they are going to get battered by that team if they you know looking for that weakest link they are going to get fully tested to the maximum so yeah it's time to really link arms and um, be strong in that relationship for your child I, I kind of view it like you have a room full of doors and that the average child will try and push those doors to get them open. But with a teenager, they'll go around that, the, all of the doors in a square. I, I visualize it in a square of doors and they'll go around every single door put, trying to try it, to open it and get their own way. And then if that doesn't work, they go around again and again. And again, yep, and, yep. And, yep. <laughs> and see if they've missed any doors at all and, you know, um yeah see if they can yeah drive something through it or another key that might open it so they're just yeah they're relentless and and it's like if they if they want got something that they want to do and the social pressures and the peer pressures that are out there it's it's relentless on them so they will be relentless on you to get to whatever you know that it's stuck in their mind at that time so it can be a a tough time totally agree (laughs) and so i i I was going to ask you, and I, mean, I thought we started talking about about it already. But what would be your top tip that you could offer parents, apart from you know linking hands and just not allowing it? 
my top tip is always communication always always keeping that relationship keeping those um those avenues back into you establishing that you are there for them so that if they do get into any trouble or if they are anxious about anything or they're unsure about things that you are part of their conversation because they are not going to be whilst we as parents we want them to get good grades we want them to do well at school we want them to behave and you know all of that that's not what they're talking about on social media they're not talking about grades and a levels they're talking about everything else that may be a bit uncomfortable for us but still we need to be part of that conversation and that comes through connection so that's my number one top tip keep communicating if it gets uncomfortable you know you get sometimes you're gonna have to just bear it and get through those conversations but um you know it's really important that we are part of it part of their journey and part of their developmental phase and i really believe that communication is vital um in every single relationship we have it's one of my core beliefs and values uh to teach people how to communicate you know, you know, it's no good waiting until the teens are out of control before you start that communication. Absolutely. And, and the same with the adults. I mean, if they only start talking about the teens' behaviour when there's something going wrong, uh, if they're not have, if they don't have good communication between themselves, they're heading for real problems, aren't they? Absolutely, absolutely. And I suppose the a main part of communication is listening as well and also picking up on body language and tone and all of those you know small things as well it's not just talking at our teens it's actually a whole plethora of ways that we we do communicate so we've got to kind of just be broad about that as well totally and yeah. and acknowledging i think acknowledgement is a huge one like, because so often we all tend to do it. We start a conversation halfway through what someone else is saying. We start practicing on our head, in our heads what we're going to say in return. Yes. And therefore, we're missing huge amounts of probably very important information mm -hmm. from the other person. And I think mm -hmm. if we cut our teenage, um, you're the expert, I mean, in that area, but seeing it, if we cut shut them down they're, they're just going to leave us and they're not going to communicate with us at all are they no no we do need to give them an opportunity to get whatever it is off their chest and um, they have to be able to trust us that we are going to give them the best advice that we possibly can that we love them that you know even if it's advice that they don't want to hear or they're not going to agree with that actually the advice that we're going to give is right from our hearts and with all of our love um so they've got to take that on board so yes but we do need to to listen listen and and help them to trust uh, trust in us and that that, that comes part of, is part of it actually yeah. um allowing them to communicate with us as well so true very good advice there <laughs> so how can parents keep their relationship with their teens on track um aside from the communication i think time Spending time with our children is um, vital. Doing those things um, together, even if they are all going to roll their eyes up to the, the skies, the heavens at you, even if they are going to do the Kevin grunts at you <laughs> um, when you suggest anything, once you get them out the door, don't, you know, don't be phased by that. Once you get them out of the door, once you get them doing something, more likely than not, they are going to enjoy their time with you. If you can get them away from social media um, and actually do something together that you know that you both are enjoying, I think that is something that's quite vital as well. So, mm -hmm. giving time to to each other to enjoy each other during this um, during this phase because it's very easy. Um, it, very easily, it can happen is that you know they can drift off and we can lose that connection. So we have to give the relationship time. We have to bring them out of their bedrooms we have to be you know sitting down and socializing at meal time if not at meal time um watching a, um, a show together that you both like and having a conversation about it and um, walking to the shop together and having a you know a conversation one-on-one -on -one. so you know just find those moments it doesn't have to be a um you know a, a huge a huge amount if you can't fit it in um but regular small quality amounts of time 
is it's important and that can be hard at times because teenagers more so i mean as they grow up they become more insular but I, and, and they don't want to share things as much. I can remember when mine were quite small and saying, how was school today? Yeah, mm-hmm. it was all right. What did you do? Nothing. Or they didn't want to share it. There's a, that, that came at a, quite an early age. Mm-hmm. But by the time they're teenagers, they can almost just become sullen and just not want to join in conversations. So that, mm-hmm. that can be tricky, can't it? It can be tricky and it's it's something that, you know, if, if we know our child and we're seeing those signs starting to happen, we have to intervene. So if we're seeing that they are retreating, you know, more and more into their bedroom, if we see, you know, if we, if we can get there at the, the beginning, then it's going to be easier, obviously. But if you recognise that, you know, all of a sudden that, that, you, that you're not spending time with them, you're going to have to put your foot down, you know, and say, this is how it's going to be. And there might, there might be some kickback, but, you know, it's, if you believe that it's something that should be happening in your home, then you as a parent, you instill that and, and, you know, make a good go at it. And more often than not, they'll, they'll enjoy it too. They'll see the benefit too. So I'd say put your foot down and um, ignore their eye rolling and their popping and sighing. I think that's great advice, but I've seen so many parents who just capitulate because they get caught in that trap. They, they try to put their foot down Mm-hmm. their youngster will then kick off in one way or another so yeah. they retract yeah and therefore they try it again and they and the, and the that youngster has learned if i make a big enough fuss exactly. then they'll back off but exactly. the problem is that they get into that whole rut don't they yeah. That, yeah. that teenager knows and therefore the parent becomes more and more scared more worried withdraws more mm-hmm. and then the, the the youngster's got the upper hand yeah yeah and that yeah. if only they, the parent in my view and i'm sure it's yours definitely because mm-hmm. you're much more it's much more your area but just hold fast just yeah. hang on for that white knuckle ride the first time <laughs> round yeah. yeah because once they learn they can't do it right they might try something else yeah. but at least if they know that they can't get, that you know they've hit the wall with the door they're not going to get that door is not going to budge on any circumstance and even the next one and the next one and the next one yeah yeah then they start learning res- or they should have learned respect earlier but they're really going to hold that respect I'd, I'd... absolutely absolutely i mean if we start backing off you know we're putting ourselves in a very weak position mm. in our own homes we don't want our teens you know their children right like, like i'm saying their brains or like you said as well their brains are still developing you know we are the adults we know what is best um more often than not that's what i that's what i teach um parents if you feel that it's right, trust your gut and go with it. If they are going to have a strop, it doesn't last for long. It seems long while you're in it, but it doesn't last for long. You're stronger. You've lived, you know, a longer life. You can handle it. I can just let them do it and they will soon learn. That's not the way to get their own way. Maybe, maybe things do need to change or they, maybe they have got a point but not in that way. They need to come back, communicate, speak to you on a different level, but definitely. I never change my opinion or my decision based on a child having a meltdown. No, 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 no. So that's kind of what I advise because otherwise you're just going to get it all the time. And that's not what you want in your home. And, you know, they can go on if, if, as soon as you say something and it's like, you know, you're, you're going to get it. So um, best to nip that in the bud. And if not, if it's not nipped in the bud and it's already happening, then prepare yourself, get ready and go for the face off. Yeah. <laughs> but win in the end. <laughs> <laughs> and it does take a lot of courage doesn't it because they can wear us down so much can't they and in the end it's oh just like you can't you're too tired you're exhausted mm-hmm. from their day stressed and so on and you just want to give in but yeah, you yeah. you know and I, I remember with mine I, it well sorry but those are the rules yeah. and i knew in the end that all right they would yeah they'd kick off but they knew at the end of the day well no she's 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 made her decision and that's it not yeah. going yeah. They, they, can, they can be like a, a dog with a bone you know they can be relentless but you know it as far as i'm concerned in my home or with the children that i'm working with it's my bone oh i love that <laughs> love it <laughs> And I think it is trying to keep a sense of humour amongst it all, isn't it? Because I think Absolutely. sometimes it's oh, 
absolutely and even with their straps i mean a lot of the the work that i i've done with young people and i still do with young people um you know when they do go into those moments and you know once it's calmed down sometimes i'll be like wow that was epic that strap do you remember when you shut the door and you slammed it behind you and it didn't close fast enough and it was a slow closing door did you see how it didn't even slam you know sometimes i have a good giggle <laughs> about their straps i do enjoy i enjoy going over it and we, we you can break it down as well so a sense of humor is very important and getting through and then you know still addressing the issue but you know we can we can have a giggle about it sometimes you know they're having straps and it, it was so unnecessary and so I, sometimes I'll go out and say, where did that come from? No, seriously, where did that come from? Because I said this and you blew. <laughs> you know, so it's, um, it is putting a smile where you can about it as well. Yeah. And, and sometimes that whole tension can be broken because yeah. you'll end up saying something really stupid or silly because it's yeah. come out of your mouth and you say, what did I say that? And yeah. the whole place can just erupt into giggles. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. or, or someone will do something in a fit of temper or, or pig and then, it, you know, it all goes wrong. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Maybe not laugh at them right there and then. You know, oh, no, 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 no. But, you know, later on. You can um, definitely yeah. um, break it down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, although we're saying, yeah, put, keep the boundaries, instill the rules. How do? You, what tips have you got for parents to enable that? You know, because you can't get them to sit on the naughty step. You're no. right. No, you can't. Um, I think it, it it comes down to confidence. It comes down to because because they're, they're, they're such a presence and they're such a force and sometimes they've only got one issue that they're focused on in their life and and that might be the one that you know whilst you've got 101 things um to worry about and think about they they are determined to get to the goal that they set out for themselves so and it's not a bad thing that you know their mm. um determination <laughs> it's not a bad thing no. but um certainly you've got to be ready for the for the challenge and and it is being brave about it and um maybe talking to to other parents as well i mean i've got a, a group of parents and um I, I think it's just a relief to be able to say that this has happened and other parents to say oh it happened to me as well you know you're not on your own this happens in my house because we can become very isolated and think oh my gosh i've done something wrong and da, 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 da. but you know we we very rarely do or if we do then you know we can correct it you know no child and no parent and no relationship and no household is the same so we, we're all in this kind of you know just working out working it out for ourselves so yeah sometimes it might not go so right or it could have gone better you learn from it you move on but you know just it's the confident building that confidence I'm doing it from a place of love and care for, for my child for my son or daughter and I'm not backing down because I know this is right for them. This feels right. Um, if I'm not sure if it's right, I've consulted with other people. But, you know, I'm going to do what is right. And that's it. Yeah. And I think that's it because we can end up doubting ourselves, can't we? So easy, yeah, especially as a single parent. I yeah. think also, or if you've got a, a partner who won't back you up. Oh, I, gosh, think they, yeah. I think those two situations can be really tricky because... I, I had so many wobbles I know with my girls mm -hmm. um, just was I being too hard was I being mean was I being was mm -hmm. I being you know tough enough was yeah. I being reasonable I mean I question myself continually yeah uh, but I think if you just feel it's right if it feels right for us then I think then that's yeah. it yes yeah, so I think you can negotiate with them yeah and I think as they get older that I think that's fair enough yeah that they feel that they've got some input into it. But I, I can remember those wobbles, but still saying, no, it doesn't feel right for me. I really did trust my gut and say, no, I don't, yeah. I don't care what, what across the road do or, or mm -hmm. your friend at school. This doesn't feel right for me and I'm sorry, yeah. but that's my rules and that's yeah. it. I've just had that conversation with my daughter today. I mean, oh. and, and the kind of message that I'm saying to her is, I want you to be able to do everything, everything that you want to do, I want you to experience and do everything and go out and have fun. I want you to, you know, to be able to go and party all night. I want you to, 
go and um, you know travel and go with your friends and go on holiday and you know and, and enjoy yeah. but everything's got its time so yeah. <laughs> and it's not just about you it's about what I'm comfortable with so don't think that I'm holding you back this is you know this is a process not just for you but for what I'm comfortable with as well and it will get there you know it's not going to get there in necessarily in the time that you want it to but believe me I want you to go fly and do everything out there and experience it so yeah. don't ever believe that I'm trying to hold you back don't ever tr ever believe that I'm trying to stop you from having fun that is not my agenda it's just there are the certain things and time frames that we've I've got to be comfortable with as a parent and that's it you know um don't see me I'm I want you to go yeah <laughs> I want you to fly um but um just not not all today <laughs> yes because uh, they all do they want it all now don't they they want it yeah. all now they want it today or if not yesterday and yeah. they can't see especially in the, um, today's life where everything mm -hmm. is instant yeah they all want it now and they can't understand why everything can't be right now mm -hmm. I think it's tougher these days isn't it for kids well it seems like everybody is doing certain things I mean social media you kind of get um a um, warped uh, impression of what life is about don't you so it can seem it can seem that everybody else is doing all of these things and having all of this fun and um, and that's not really the reality so no. as parents you know we have got that pressure as well but yeah. as a parent stick to your guns what are you comfortable with and you know what are you clear about in terms of your boundaries be clear about them and expect the challenge you know that children should challenge you know we yeah. challenge ourselves as adults we will always want to push ourselves and push where we are children are going to push and push and push so be clear where you put your boundaries because they will push against it so even if you give them everything even if you say okay you can come back at midnight when they really you want them back at 10 when midnight comes they're going to come back at half past 12 or one o'clock so be, be comfortable where you're putting those boundaries because they're going to push it anyway so you might as well say 10. <laughs> Don't expect them at 10.30 and then still, um, you know, put the consequences in when they step in at 10.30. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can even remember myself as as a teenager doing exactly that, and that's why I was giggling because okay. I, I did it, and then my kids did it. So you yeah. know, so, and then my grandkids do it. You know, yeah. they're never going to be happy. They will never be happy, no matter what you say or where you put your boundaries. They're never ever going to be happy. So don't, don't. There's no point giving in because when you give in, it won't be good enough. But I think the other side of it is remembering that if they are pushing the boundaries, that they're they've got strength of character because yes. if they didn't challenge then they would just be timid they wouldn't develop their personalities they wouldn't develop that yeah. drive they wouldn't develop any of that so looking at it from the other side it, it's quite healthy for them to have those things yeah. and I think that's important to remember that yeah, yeah that they're, they're gonna they're gonna challenge me but they're gonna challenge the world they're gonna yeah. challenge everything and want to you know try new things so I, I think we have to remember that bit as well yeah absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. so yeah it's not it's not all bad it doesn't feel so great but it's not a it's not a bad thing you know when they do come they when they do come for that boundary line it's not so bad <laughs> yeah not all the and, time. I, and when we were talking we were saying how can parents instill the rules and I can remember one of mine and saying to her right you're grounded and she said I'm already grounded and I just retorted back with well you're grounded on top of being grounded okay <laughs> what? What she you know? Know? where do you go from there <laughs> well it wasn't anywhere so you're grounded <laughs> on top of grounded that's it <laughs> yeah. yeah it's um, <laughs> some it's looking at me <laughs> But hey, you've got to have that. You've got to have the last word, not them. So yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, my girls are at a stage now where, um, you know, if they want the last word, I I will say to them, you can have the last word, but then you will have to write about it. I want to make you write an essay <laughs> or lines. So it's up to you. You can have the last word if you want to, or you can stop now. They're like, okay, mom, because it, uh, yeah, if, if you really, if it's if it's that important to you, you're gonna write about it. That's what that's where we're at right now. <laughs> Mummy must win. I say, when you've got your own children, you can have that last word with them, but it's not happening here. 
<laughs> oh, dear. oh, wonderful. <laughs> so what does a parent do when they, you know, if they just feel they can't get through to their teen? What can they do? Oh, you know what? If the relationship has gone to a point where, you know, you cannot get through, that's when you call in your network and your support system. You call in anybody you can to come and help you keep your child safe. You know, that's the ultimately, if you don't know what your child is up to, where they are, who they are, you want somebody who, anyone who can connect with them to contact the school, anybody in the family, um, other friends, don't, don't ever think that you know you're on your own or you have to do this on your own don't feel the shame or feel that you're going to be judged don't even care about that make sure your child is safe if I'm ever in a situation where I feel my child isn't hasn't heard me because sometimes they don't want to listen to us you know as parents they don't want they're just not going to take it as real I'm calling in the troops whoever I can to back up what I'm saying so that they understand that it's not just me whining on you know it might be somebody else somebody else that they have a bit more respect for or you know at that time or about that subject um sometimes i go to youtube and find a topic matter and use youtube to come and tell my child and teach my child that it's not just me who's saying it so pull in as many resources if it's um you know a professional like you know me or or yourself pull in the resources do not leave your child out there to chance you know so if, if you're struggling everybody get everybody involved that's <laughs> that's my motto everybody is involved with my bringing up my child and my motto is it takes a village to raise a child and that's it and their children until um you know they're, they're leaving home and you know often flourishing away somewhere so it takes a village to raise a child bring in that village and keep your child secure and safe as possible I think that's such a great, I love that motto that you have. I think that's a really good mantra to have. And I, I so agree with you because I think too often parents just give up and then the child is at risk. And then mm. we know that it can, if we haven't taught that child what is safe and what isn't, if we haven't given them um, the boundaries, if we don't make it clear and keep h that hold of those, mm -hmm. they it, they can fall foul of some really horrid things that we hear about. Really bad, absolutely. absolutely. So, yeah, it's it, you're right, pulling the troops yeah. and whatever it takes uh, whatever just to make sure. Whatever yeah. it takes. Just throw shame out of the window, throw it, you know, anybody judging me and uh, forget all of that. All you need to do is make sure your child is safe you can reclaim yeah. all your dignity back whenever, you know, if, if you feel that you've lost it. Um, but I, I don't care. If my child, I feel, is going off the rails. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm involving everybody. Everybody is involved in raising my child and making sure that, that you know, that, that they're safe. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's kind of, you know, how, how I would, what I would advise anybody to do. That's, that's our number one priority is making sure that our children, you know, thrive we don't want anything taking them off that path so yeah and I think what I noticed with you so much and I, I really respect about you it, it's not you just talking the talk you walk the walk as well and you you really you you live it and I've seen yeah. it in your Facebook group as well that yeah you're in it and you're in you sort of roll up your sleeves and you're in there and even when you're struggling you you are share it with everybody yes and yeah, I think absolutely. that that's just so lovely that as I say you, you you just you're in there with it and you're part of it and you understand it and mm -hmm. so you're a great role model I think oh thank you. <laughs> thank you yeah, yeah really you know do. what um we're, we're all in it together we're all in it together and um we've all got experiences we can all support we can all learn from each other so and sometimes you know maybe maybe we we know what we need to do we just need like a little nudge or you know maybe we've not realized that it's coming from um you know a certain place or a perspective and somebody else can you know point that out and it's like an aha moment so absolutely um you know the network is is that you build around yourself is so important and if you haven't got family and friends around you, get online, join the groups that are out there. Um, join my group, um, by all means, you know, but, but join a network, get your network um, working, working with you and for you.
yeah. yeah because i think nowadays as you say with the online groups and and with the advent of the internet and and although facebook can get some really bad knocks i think there's so many great resources there as well mm -hmm. and i i think it's it's great because you don't need to feel that sense of guilt and shame you're not on your own no. um, and once you get in those groups you realize that yeah you you're you're not the only one that it, it happens to all parents one way or another we'll all have a wobble and, yeah. and i think that's so nice it, it certainly wasn't around when mine were growing up no, and, no. and it was quite tough then to to find those resources sometimes mm -hmm. the biggest one is with social media how mm -hmm. do you limit their time oh my gosh um if your child is not on social media yet do not let them on. That's, that's my biggest tip. Because once you open those floodgates, you can't you can't draw it back. You know. So if they if they're not, my eldest daughter, she is thirteen. I've told her that she can go on social media or have social media when she is fifteen. So year ten. Um. That's that's how. Because I suppose because I work in the industry, you know, with young people, I can see the damage that it does. And what I tell parents is, and what I tell my daughter, and what I tell other children, you know, in my care is, after you have spoken to your friends about the day, about things that you've already done, what is left to talk about? The only thing left to talk about is gossiping about other people, which can then lead to bullying or sharing inappropriate videos what what else is it to do on social media it, it's um it's a cesspit you know and especially for the for the young ones um they have got age limits in place um a lot of children or a lot of parents um allow their children on there before age or, or they don't know that there are, there are age limitations if these um social media sites are putting those age limits then you can you know you can understand that there could be like another couple of years you could put on top of that that's their mm. standard you know that's their standard um it causes so much so so many problems um with young people it causes so so many problems with young people um it isn't positive uh, there's been studies showing that it doesn't you know the, the negative effects of being on social media and the time and waiting for how many people like give you a like for a photo and how that can make you feel bad if you haven't had so many or a negative comment it just it's just a quick type and a negative comment and that's stuck with your child um you know for the yeah. rest of the year so if they're not on it already <laughs> um don't allow them on for a while longer you know longer than what you what you believe Where, whatever place you believe it should be add a couple of years that's what i'd say um okay. yeah but what about those that are on it already? How do you, what do you put in place? What is it, the rules that you make? Um, you know, I, I, I don't agree. I mean, I say to adults when I'm working with them, you shouldn't, don't have a TV in your bedroom because mm -hmm. uh, the TV is for downstairs. And mm -hmm. I think now we've got smart, smart TVs and they can, children can access an awful mm -hmm. lot. And they're smart enough to get round the parental controls because I, mm -hmm. when I work with the parents, I hear, you know, well, every time I put the parental control on, they know how to take it off and put it back on again without me knowing. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so much. And I, it just is, what do you do? What controls do you put in? What, what disciplines? What if boundaries? You, if you haven't put any in already, then prepare yourself for the kickback get ready for that because they're going to they're going to come for you um but prepare yourself it's it's going to happen and that's normal that's okay but make sure you know what it is that you want or how, what what standard or what um rules they are in your home what be clear about that mm -hmm. and be confident that you are doing the right thing for your child if you're not comfortable with it if there's a niggle in your stomach then do something about it it's not right if it's if it doesn't feel right for you it isn't right um the number one thing I would, you know, turn off the Wi-Fi. You know, if, if when they're going to bed, leave, get them to leave the phones downstairs. Um, ensure that you know, you know, or try and get access to the sites that they they are on or what they're going to share with you. They're exposed to everything. So social yeah. media, they're exposed to everything. So every everything that you could possibly feel that you don't want your child exposed to, 
those are the subject the topics that you need to start talking to your child about if you're in this situation if you know somebody in this situation what are you going to do you know they're exposed to everything so you know get yourself prepared to have those conversations and those uncomfortable conversations with your children because that's what they're talking about on social media yeah and I, I would agree wholeheartedly with you. It's not, it's being open to conversations, being open to hear what they're talking about. Yep. And um, I think also preparing them for those dangers because if they just make friends with anybody, they don't know who that person is and they can so easily fall into harm. And it's teaching them what they need to look out for isn't it it's teaching yeah. them you don't just friend somebody because they want to talk to you you don't no. i mean i get it even on instagram i mean <laughs> i get young guys i mean they they like what i posted and then they'll send me a private message and i'm going you must be joking <laughs> now if it's happening to me i mean what what about these young kids you know the yeah. youngsters because yeah. I can see the how what they're about. They they don't want to talk to me about business. They're not interested in about what I'm doing as a relationship specialist. What they're in, they they're just up there for uh, I don't know what it is what what they want. But mm -hmm. but they certainly it's not savoury. Let's put it that way. No, um, no. And, and if they could be st stupid enough, because they've got to be stupid to do it with me, then mm -hmm. surely what what's that like for a youngster who who could be easily swayed and think gosh he looks like a nice person or she looks like a nice person because mm -hmm. we can't just say it's men who do it can we no, no um and i think it is and and just preparing them and, and making them clear what the boundaries are i think is it snapchat where they they can actually find out exactly the, the location of yeah. somebody yeah. and i think again warning the parents letting the children know that they they shouldn't have that location on there i think I can't remember what the setting it is. is but yeah, they change their their um the way that it's used, or when you download it, that you know your location is, is yeah. on there, so people can actually see you and see what you're doing at that time. So it, you know they're open to everything. That's that's what I say. Everything, yeah. all of the nasties, you know, the pornography, the yeah. snuff videos, the um abusive videos, violence, all of that. They're mm -hmm. open to every single thing. Um, so that's, you know, that's where you need, you need to be basing your conversations around those horrible, uncomfortable subjects and just get on with it. That's your child. They're out there and they're on there and they, they're exposed to it. You need to be part of those conversations that they're having, um, or that other children are having with them. Even if your child isn't involved in certain things, they'll be talking to other children who are. So, you know, you've got to, you really need to make sure that they are covered um you know with your with your care in all aspects yeah. yeah and 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 you did talk about communication i think keeping those lines of communication open mm -hmm. um to the degree that they feel able to say whatever they want to to you i think yeah. the bottom line is i think through all of this that you've talked about today is about communication mm -hmm. and 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 boundaries i think those are the two most important things i I would take away from you anyway yeah yeah absolutely I think um yeah I think I think you know those, those are the main main points and and also confidence in and trusting yourself as a parent trust your gut trust yourself and um you know expect the um kickback of anything that you put in place expect it and they'll get over it yeah yeah. yeah absolutely <laughs> hold your hold your steel yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nicely put. um i've really enjoyed talking to you today i don't know if there's anything else you want to add before we finish but it's been amazing and i've really enjoyed it and, it, oh, and i hope that um i hope the listeners enjoy it too because um is there anything else you wanted to add before um just to say that my group on facebook is it's called the parents of teens and preteens village community so okay. pop your you know in the search pop it in the search and um yeah join us it'll be lovely right. to have you there that's great and I'll, I'll put all the links to your contact details and so on in the show that's notes good. as well yeah. so that anybody can see it because sometimes we can't always hear it can we um when we're talking so
yeah it's, it's just been a pleasure talking to you so oh, thank, thank you. you so much for chatting today it's been you're, it's been you're welcome thanks Wendy for inviting me I so hope you enjoyed that interview with Anika as much as I did. She's such a bubbly person and she's very good and experienced about what she does. So if you enjoyed it, then please leave a review. It would be really helpful to let us know how you're feeling about all the podcasts that I'm recording. And so for now, it's just for me to say bye and until next time. Bye now.